Hey guys, how are we doing? It's Martin Cliff here um, with Rig Rundown. Um, now a number of people have asked me for one of these um, since maybe in Hong Kong. I haven't done a full Rig Rundown for, for quite some time. So um, I thought now was the time to do it uh, as I'm here in my studio in Hong Kong. Well, technically I'm in my living room in Hong Kong. My studio is the other side of that wall. Um, but so I'm just going to explain what I use. Now at the moment the guitars I use are these. Um, this is Snowy, this is um, Ibanez JS100 uh, in white, which is the only made for a couple of years. Um, I've talked about this before and I will be doing a full review of it, but basically it's um, it's a Korean model. Um, it has Damasio pickups in it, a Air Northern and a D-Sonic. Um, Damasio pots and switching, I replaced all that. Um, other than that, I mean, it's pretty much a stock guitar. I've had it nine years, it's been played to death. Um, it's in pretty good neck. I have another one uh, in black that is almost exactly the same, except it's 2004. Uh, that one I call Beastie. Um, and there, they're my main guitars. That is going to change. Well, I'm not getting rid of these, but more guitars will be coming into the fold and I'll be reviewing them as I get them. Okay, so. I will move across to the rig and just kind of explain how it's set up. So the basic premise of the setup is that there are, it's all analog, there are pedals in drawers and they're switched by these RJM Music Mini Effect Gizmos, which are high quality relay switches that have a series of loops in them. Um, five in, in, in the case of the Mini Effect Gizmo, so each loop is basically a true bypass circuit, so you leave the pedal on and then you can turn them on and off with these buttons on the front. Um, and it's all programmable via MIDI to the point that then you use a MIDI foot controller such as this one here, uh, which is the RJM Mastermind. They're not usually blue, this was a limited edition. Um, and each foot switch then selects a preset. Or you can control it manually using instant access mode, which is using MIDI uh, control change information. But basically, the signal comes in into the rack uh, at the back from the guitar and into this top shelf. And in the top shelf, we have six pedals. We actually have five loops um, because the smart gate is on all the time. So the signal comes in, and then loop one is up here this full turn 69 Mark II fuzz pedal, which, as you can see, the um, but you may be able to see the volume is just over halfway and the fuzz is all the way up and the other two controls input and contour are about halfway as well uh, about 12 o'clock um, generally what i'm aiming for here is is tonal variation rather than level variation um, tray two is where the boost pedals and all that kind of stuff comes in so that's loop one loop two loop one that has to go first and i can't use the buffer on this um, because it's an old style fuzz pedal and it doesn't like buffers at all. Uh, so, so that comes first and it's even positive um, center, so reverse polarity power. So I've had to get a reverse polarity power lead and, and connect that up. Loop 2 is the full tone 70BC 108C fuzz pedal, um, which is slightly more aggressive fuzz. Um, volume is quite low. Uh, at about 10 o'clock. Fuzz again is all the way up um, because you need with fuzz pedals you want to be able to control them from the guitar and then the mids are on 9 o'clock about um, and I'm powering this one on 18 volts. A uh, number of reasons main one being uh, I think I had an 18 volt output free um, and I didn't have a 9 volt output free. Loop 3 then is this, uh, cider is on but that doesn't really matter, um, this Mofo Vibe from Sweet Sound, uh, which is very much a boutique one. Um, single knob, re really simple, I've touched by that before, wax lyrical about it, it's a great sounding vibe pedal. Don't use it a whole lot, but when I do it's, it's a lovely sound, it's my only modulation sound in this particular rig. Loop 4 then is the OCD, which is kind of tube screamery I guess, but just better sounding generally. Again running at 18 volts, um, volume at 11, drive at about 2, tone at about 1 and it's in HP which is high phase mode. And finally loop 5 is the full tone catalyst 
which I've got set up just before it goes mental. It's in spark mode rather than flame mode. Um, if you watch my review of this, you'll know that when you turn the game past about 3.30, as soon as it hits 4 o'clock it goes absolutely, it's a real jump. So I'm running that at about 3.30. And volume is just below 12. Bass mids uh, about 4 o'clock and the treble at about 11. And then finally on this loop is the... Um, on this pedal is a smart gear which comes after the mini effect gizmo uh, and it's just set halfway up just to cut down noise because obviously dirt pedals generate quite a bit of noise and then sliding shelf 2 is um, I'm going to turn that off just, just for now I'm snagging on something at the back you can just about see the uh, custom audio electronics power station from MXR um, which has 18 power outputs and I'm using 15 of them uh, everything is transformer isolated so you don't get any ground loops between pedals which is fantastic um, so I'm using all of the 9 volt DC outputs um, 3 out of 4 of the 18 volt ones for the 3 full tone pedals that I talked about, the OCD, the Catalyst and the 70 fuzz um, then I'm using a 9 volt AC output which is powering this mini effect gizmo which then phantom powers the mastermind um, and the adjustable output is set to about 9 volts and that powers the other mini effect gizmo so on this mini effect gizmo then we have five loops again um, loop one is the exotic SP compressor which is a fantastic sounding compressor really versatile I haven't found a bad setting yet but the way I've got it set at the moment it's volume at 11 the blend at about 2 and it's on the, the mini switches in the mid position Loop 2 then is the magic weapon of the whole rig, which is an exotic EP booster that is set about 8.30. Um, and you can run this on 18 volts, but this particular one, um, I used to run it on 18 volts all the time, and it doesn't like it anymore for some reason. Something's gone a bit awry with it. Um, so I'm running it on 9 volts now, but it works fine on 9 volts, no trouble at all. And it just adds a sort of magic sparkle to the sound. And then next booster along, um, I was using a Custom Audio Electronics uh, 401 boost pedal from MXR, um, but I decided I actually preferred the tone of this TC Electronic Spark booster, which I got free when they did their um, buy two pedals, get a free Spark booster promotion about 18 months ago, or maybe 12 months ago, I can't remember. Um, and I've got it set fairly subtle, it's in the fat mode, the switch, um, which basically means that it ramps up the low end a little bit and, and the mids as well uh, whereas mid boost gives you a peak in the mids and I'm already getting it for that from the OCD because I tend to run these two together quite a bit um, so I wanted more low end but then I rolled off the bass a little bit treble I've got at one o'clock and then the gain is, is again quite low at, at nine o'clock and the level about ten o'clock I just want a slight level boost but just a fattening up of the signal and finally, looks 4 and 5 are two uh, MXR Carbon Copy analog delays, um, which just sound fantastic. They're, they're both set fairly low, they've both got the mod on, which means that um, yeah, you get modulation on your delays. I tend to run these all the time. One is set to a longer delay, one is set to a shorter delay. If I was guessing, I would guess they're about 300 and 500 milliseconds, but I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, they're just what sounds good. Um, and, and that's really the rig, then it goes out to the amp, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so the amp setup I'm using for this rig is uh, my Ignator Tweaker 15 um, that I've swapped out some of the tubes on. Um, so it's it's got more headroom, it's not as not as gainy. Um, so the valve one, uh, I, I took out the um, 12x7 that was in there and put in a 5751 tube from 43 years ago uh, in 1970 um, and, and that it has about 70% of the gain of a 12x7 and just makes the amp come alive um, V2 which is for the effects loop I put in a tube from the 80s um, it's a Tesla uh, 12x7 tube and then the phase inverter I put a 12AT7 in um, from 78 or 79 somewhere around there um, 
which again just just helps to um, it, it just makes the amp uh, give it a bit more headroom. And the power tubes then are um, some Russian military uh, 6v6 tubes. As you can see, I run the tight switch off, so it's in deep mode, so I get more low end. Um, the bright switch is on, so it gives me more high end. Um, now the setting is clean, and my gain, I'm now running at 11 o'clock. I discovered that I had my gain pedals and my boost pedal and stuff all set slightly hot, so it meant I couldn't pull my gain up, so I was running at about 9 o'clock. So I've tweaked the settings of the pedals in the rig. Um, a few days ago, before obviously before I shot this video, um, and I've been able to now turn the gain up to about 11 o'clock, which just makes a difference to the sound and really, really helps. Um, bass is about 130, middle about 1030, treble about 130. Um, just to give it a slight bit of scoop, but not not a huge amount of scoop. It's to say it's mostly run clean, um, and it's on the British mode. And that just really helps it to sound like kind of your classic vintage Marshall kind of sound. And then I run the master volume at about 130. Um, one of the weird quirks about this kind of amp is that the master volume, you run the master volume up to about 1230, it, it sounds kind of bland and generic like any other um, affordable valve amp. Run it past one o'clock and it comes alive and just becomes something very special indeed. So um, that that's why I run it there. But that means then that it is blisteringly loud, um, particularly in a in a small apartment. So that's why then on top I have this uh, this Palmer power pad uh, attenuator, um, which is stock rather than I've added some big rubber feet to it. Um, and I'm actually running it at the moment all the way down on on setting five, which is 18% uh, of the of the full output. Um, basically the way it works is it adds 3 dB of attenuation every click so it's 15 dB is what it's on on setting 5 um, bear in mind a 6 dB loss is half the volume so it's between a quarter and an eighth of the volume uh, that it would be in full uh, and I'll demonstrate that for you in a second and then that goes out then to these two Agnator speaker cabs the one with the broken logo plate it has a Celestian green back in it, it's a 25 watt speaker, and then the one uh, at the bottom has a the, the stock G12H30 speaker, 70th anniversary model in. And as you can see, I'm making up with a couple of SM57s at the moment. This is in live rig setup kind of um, mode. I have other amp clamps. These devices are called amp clamps. I'll do a review of that on them fairly soon. Um, that have a spot for my ribbon microphones as well, but which I use for recording. Uh, but for live, um, yeah, the, just the 57 generally works great. I tend to just tip it in a little bit more. In terms of distance from the speaker, obviously they need to be both the same so we don't get any phasing problems. Um, and it's about three quarters of an inch from the grill cloth to the front of the 57. Um, and then obviously you've got the, the speaker itself it is behind the grill cloth recessed quite away. So probably talking a couple of inches from the dust cap um, which is and it's pointing towards just where the dust cap meets the, the cone uh, and that works really well for me and then the two mic signals go back into the back of the rack purely because um, I've got a, a Palmer Sigma uh, merge box in there and that just combines the signal from the two things so I only need to run a single mic cable then back to the recorder or the PA or, or whatever um, and that's why they need to be perfectly in phase, um, which they are, so it's all good. So that's the rig. I'll just grab the guitar and then I can demonstrate some of these things. Okay, so I'm just running completely clean at the moment. Um, no pedals on, no, no anything on, so the only thing in the signal chain is, is the noise gate. Um, and this is with the attenuator on. I'll demonstrate what the attenuator does. So... setting four setting three getting louder 
Да. Bypass the attenuator, you'll get it in full whack. Which that's probably distorting the microphones and it's far too loud for an apartment, which is why I run the attenuator. It also has a load box mode so that I can, if I need to, um, just run it without any speakers. Um, I've never done that because I don't have a speaker simulator. Uh, but it's an option that's available to me if, if I ever want to do it. So how does each pedal sound individually? Um, well, I, I will play through that just briefly so you can hear them. I'll have to use the preset button, uh, the buttons on the front of the mini effectors now because I've got presets set up on the mastermind and that is um, complicated. So again, clean sound. <laughs> Sixty nine fuzz. just from that pedal. Looking at the 70 fuzz now. Um, at full work on, on that humbucker. got a whole lot of on and this one when it cleans up goes very trebly so So on the bridge in single coil mode, it, it, it sounds almost kind of lo-fi kind of sounding. So just from the guitar volume pedal, you can get an enormous range of tones. The way I have it set. Right, the vibe pedal then. Is set to a moderately slow vibe sound, yeah. Just the speed of that to suit the song, but generally that's how I have it set. OCD is my main kind of rock tone. Um, so, bridge on Booker. <laughs> Again, that 
cleans up quite nicely. The tone I was using at the start was that with a couple of other pedals. Catalyst on its own doesn't do a huge amount, so I'll, I'll clean. So just fattening up the tone. really comes into its own is when I run it after the OCD or after the 70 fuzz um, that can really give it a lot of beef and then lower shelf we have let's say the, the compressor pedal so without the compression on really evens out the dynamics, um, brings out single notes to be the same as the chords. because I love what it does to my tone and my playing. New P booster. Again, it expands it and brightens it and just gives it a little bit of um. Spark booster, my new addition to the rig. Again, it's um, fairly subtle what it does, but it's just giving a bit more fullness to the tone, or a little bit more level to drive the amp. about four delays and they're reasonably be short and then look five is the longer delay and the coolest thing about this is of course that they just fall away and, and get out of the way of your playing So when you stop, they fill up the sound, but when you're playing, because of the modulation, it darkens the delay tone. And run both together. So there we go, that's uh, my current rig. Um, subject to change. Probably not much will change to that, but I'm going to add to it because I have uh, an idea in my head for a kind of second rig that I can then AB. Um, but watch this space over that one. Um, the only things I didn't say about, about the guitar is at the moment I have a um, string mute from Groove Gear, 
um, on the guitar, which just helps to tighten up loose strings when I'm playing, um, you know, tapping stuff or what have you. Most of the time it just sits on the bridge out of the way. Uh, I have a Planet Waves NS um, Mini headstock tuner, um, which for some reason they've discontinued and replaced with a micro tuner that is bigger. Um, and then you can't actually see it, but in the back of the bridge I've got a tremor nerve system. Um, which I will again I'll review at some point. It just keeps my bridge in place because I've got used to playing fixed bridge guitars, um, so and I like that I can bend strings without putting match in. So when I need to use a wiring bar, I can just un uh, undo the thumb screws at the back and use the wiring bar. But for the most part, particularly playing live, I'll go on things, go out of tune or whatever like that. And I keep it locked. Uh, it's all happy. So I'm going to um, do another video of combination tones that I use using multiple pedals and stuff and um, that will be in part two. Stay tuned. See you soon guys. Take care.